what's going on guys and gals? Chef PV here. <clears throat> Troy's your gun FPV team B rotor. 500 below, right? Connects files. We are gonna talk converters. <clears throat> now, I had a converter, the first one that's on my ground station build, um, that worked fine. It was no lag or seemingly no lag. Um, and it provided a great clean picture, it provided me no problems. I did have a problem that I thought was gonna be isolated to using at the time. I was using the um, receiver on the monitor to then send the signal with a very thin servo wire connection to the converter. So I had some washout that I was fly, it was flyable. I was able to fly through, but some people had seen some videos where uh, clearly I had had some washout in some bright situations. And quite honestly, it was hard to fly. Um, especially when the camera was trying to catch up with the lighting, you would get really bad flares and really, really brights that were completely pretty much white, um, kind of like a whiteout. So I, I was waiting on a receiver to build the rest of my ground station. Um, the odd thing was 3.3, my receiver for that was a little less washed out. It was much more flyable. So I was really hoping it was the RX. But then I started having issues because that first one, which is this brand, it's the Mini AV2 HDMI, um, basically gave up on me after a day of actually not using it, but having it plugged in. So I had it plugged in for like six hours at a race that I didn't even use the analog. And when I got home, I tried to use it for the tiny whoop and it wouldn't work. So I was like, oh no, I somehow burnt it out. I noticed that I was running 5.13 volts through the regulator. So I bumped it down and thought maybe I burnt it out over a long period of time. But what I did was um, I had to find a new one. So this one was like $17 originally. So I basically look, whenever I go on Amazon and everything, I know there are a bunch of products that look the same. Um, and a lot of the times are just kind of rebranded and one guy wants an extra dollar, or whatever. And we see this in mini quads all the time, right? Uh, but just like mini quads, this is gonna be a perfect example of what to look for um, because these two units, and I'm going to actually show you this one. This one looks just like these, but um, I'll tell you in a little bit. This one is the exact same internally as this one, okay? So this is the good one that I used, but I burnt up, but was a little washed out. This one was the next, well, I bought this one. Long story short, I, had to ret I need to return that one for other reasons, but I opened it up and come to find out it's the same as this. And so when looking at these two boxes, you're like, hey, those look the same, right? They're pretty much, they, they must be. Well, I did the same thing and online, I didn't really notice some of the differences on the box. Notice this one says on over here, the bad one, HD video audio converter, full HD. It's a little bit different. The symbol is not the same size. The words are smaller and because, um, you know, they use the word audio, so, it's just weird. The cutout for the box itself for where the unit sits on this one, the bad one, is different. It's smaller. Um, and you're not going to be able to see this that well, but this bad one or good one has like a shiny reflective surface. It's like a legitimate box feel, right? And this one feels printed. It's like dull and matte. So there's some giveaways right there off the bat that when I opened the box, I was like, whoa, like what? Maybe it's not the same. Look at the back and like, again, the good one here has like some des some descriptions of what it does, kind of its performance. This one shows some performance, but it's not quite the same and it just feels missing something, right? So <clears throat> anyways, they both say they are compliant with everything and made in China. But point being is that's just the boxes. So everybody online with parts is like, oh, it's just the packaging. Everything inside's the same. This is an example. Good one, good converter. Open it up. Again, the case is almost identical. It's literally, it looks like a clone of itself in the case. Bad one. All right. Quickly, right off the top of your head, you're like, bam, one's green, one blue, whatever. Different color PCBs are actually really indicative of different things. Green PCBs typically will be higher end, especially when you get this nice, kind of green, bright, kind of golf grass green, right? Not the really super dark or like the weird flaky kind of green, just that one. I mean, typically, I'm not saying all green PDBs are great. I'm just saying typically 
quality green PDBs like that are usually quality. Blue, blue, a lot of times on PDBs has to do with um, design and mock-up stages. These are going to be your kind of usual lower grade PD PCBs. Um, not to say that all blues are. There are some high quality ones. I'm not even saying this one's a bad one. I'm just saying, in my experience, more inexpensive components are made on blue than green. Just, and I'm not a, like technically inclined to this stuff necessarily. But then you look deeper and you start seeing some real differences before we even flip it over. They look very similar, right? Like super similar. Except you'll notice the blue one has a less one less chip, like one less main chip. Okay. Like it, it we have a big one on the green one, we have another kind of medium one, and then we have actually two more. There's two missing chips on the front side that I, I don't know what they do, right? I don't. Um, and then you'll see, and I don't know what these are called, but whatever these are, I'll, let me get something to point with here. Whatever <clears throat> these are here, and I'm not sure what those are. Those long silver kind of cap capacitor kind of, I don't know. Is it a capacitor? Is it a resistor? I'm not sure. Um, it has one on the main side here. This one has two. So we're missing this, this chip here. And we're also technically missing that chip there because this is the same, I believe, as this one here. So we're missing two decent sized chips and some capacitors and resistors. And just looking at the components, I can tell you this main chip here doesn't have anything written on it. It's not even a named chip. Over here, we do. It's a macro. It's macro. Uh... Micro something, I can't see it, I'm sorry. My, Anyways, um, but it, it's got a named chip, right? More chips on, on coming soon, hold on. So anyway, so we're looking at that, and then look, oh man, look, those are just coiled up pieces of wire. They're not even like solid, like covered up. They're just there around it. Ugh. Anyways, um, this one has a quality assurance sticker, by the way. But let's look at the back side. Wow, look at the back of that one, all right. You want to see what the back of this one looks like? Nothing. There's nothing on the back of this one. Like, so everything that it uses to do what it does, which is it is taking in RCA component, upscaling it to 720 or 1080. For the glyphs, you can only use 720. So it's upscaling it and then shooting it out the HDMI. It's using a 5-volt source of power to do it. Here's your switch. So these are all the components that it uses to do that job. Whereas on the back side of this one, which already has more on the front side, this one here, now, oh man, I'm trying to get to focus, sorry. It does, it's focusing on my hands. <laughs> Hold on. I really want you to see that, that main chip too because it says something awesome on it. There it goes. You see it? Samsung. Whatever that big giant chip on the back is, I don't know what it is, but I can tell you, I bet you it has to do with the upconverting and the HD picture. Yeah, that is right there. What probably does the meat and potatoes of what it wants. So why does any of that matter, Troy? Like, why are we looking at it and figuring this out? Well, I'll tell you why. I had problems. I had major problems. So again, I burnt this one up or one like it. Um, it just stopped working, but it was working fine and I wanted it back so I could start testing RX's against it. Well, in the process, I ordered two of the wrong ones and I was having issues and this got me to wondering why am I having issues and can I figure it out what the reason for the issue is hardware wise so people can kind of buy the right hardware and know where, where the hardware problem is because debugging this stuff is mind boggling. So I can just tell you that whatever this has and is doing, it is the reason why there is zero lag. Because in this one, I had major lag. Not only did I have major lag, I had interference from radios that were causing crazy things like blackouts and striations when they were bound and connected close to proximity. I was having just, like it was completely unflyable. Oddly enough, the 3.3 again, remember I had some interesting results with the 3.3 receiver earlier on this one that was a little less washed out in picture. 
it was a little less laggy here. It was actually borderline flyable. It was almost like high quality mode, but not quite. It was a little less laggy than high quality on a Connect. But this one, zero lag feel, felt feels just like HP Plus or better. Um, but I had the washout. Well, problem is, even with two other receivers, I'm still getting washout. But there's some hope. There's some something about this that makes me wonder. On this better quality one, there's a port or two that are oddly familiar to us mini quad guys. Or anybody really in the kind of game of programming um, hardware. It's got a UART. And it's got an I2C, and it's got a swim connection. So can we tap into this and adjust some of the settings or change the firmware, or I don't know. What can we do? I, somebody somebody higher, higher up in the skill level department than me needs to get on that. But um, I will put the link to this one. I'll put the link to the other two or three that I know are known bad ones. And if anybody comes across one that you open yours up and it's blue, send me a send me a number or a link or something so I can put up that in the description and keep it updated. Um, let's keep this moving. Let's keep talking about this on this thread, and I'll keep making videos as we come up with more info. But that's me and my conversion converter situation. This one with the shiny box, the nice big symbol, all that, and again in the links from Amazon. Good. Dull box, blue insides, all that bad. I'll leave you guys on one last thing. How to open these things up without breaking them and taking them apart to where if it's the wrong one and you've done no damage, you're no necessarily harm in sending it back, I suppose. Um, you do what you wish on that. To do that, it's quite simple actually. There are going to be four spots. They are equally located here, 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 and here. The smallest flathead screwdriver you can. Just literally press straight in. Just straight in in those four little spots. Just barely. And just see if you can kind of lift up the, the shell. It should lift pretty quickly off. The reason it does is... I can actually do this one by hand probably. Nope. So I got my little screwdriver. Just press in. It pops right open. You'll see those little spots. One, two, three, and four. All right. Pop them open, double check them, put them right back together. Don't do anything, you know, sinister and send back a bad one. Please don't do that. Um, just wanted to show you guys how to open it up and just double check that it's the one you need. There you go, guys. Fly safe, fly smart, fly connects. Hopefully we can get some analog going to the glyphs. Peace.